A Texas jury sentenced a black man to life in prison with a possibility of parole after 30 years of the 2014 death of a Colleen police detective. Marvin Guy shot Chuck uh, Dinwiddie on, um, uh, during a no-knock narcotics raid in May of 2014. Though it was a capital murder trial, the jury found him guilty on a lesser charge of murder. Folks, Guy waited in jail for more than nine years before his trial. Now, he said he mistook them for an intruder after a SWAT team smashed his bedroom window and tried to break into his home with a battering ram during a 5.45 a.m. drug raid. The raid was plagued with issues. The team struggled to penetrate the door with their battering ram fully, and an officer accidentally detonated his stun grenade. No-knock warrant was obtained by a tip that a guy had been dealing cocaine. So what's, what's so strange about this story, uh, and this is so reminiscent to so many of these other no-knock warrant stories we see on the Congo, uh, is this notion that you're in places like Texas where you can protect yourself. It's 5.45 in the morning. You don't know who the hell is trying to tear your door down. And so if you got a gun and all, you hearing someone is trying to tear your door down, your natural reaction to, is to protect yourself. But th this is right, this right here is why no knock warrant should absolutely be banned. Absolutely. And not only that, because we see they after multiple tries of trying to get into his home, you know, usually police come in with one bang and they're in the door. So you hear multiple attempts to try to get into your door. You're automatically going to think something, particularly if you think if you particularly if you live in a neighborhood that that's not considered safe. The fact of the matter is, is people talk about stand your ground all of the time, but don't believe black people have the right to stand our ground. And that's where the hypocrisy comes in. And to your last point here, when you talk about this is why no-knock warrants need to be destroyed entirely and we should never use them again. Families of police officers need to know that more situations like this can indeed happen. Since, you know, with Brianna Taylor, you know, and her boyfriend as well, you know, he also shot at them. And so police are also at risk of losing family members. And we know that the police and police unions are not going to particularly care about the fact that some of us may lose our lives at the extent at the hands of these no-knock warrants, but maybe when they start realizing that their own fellow officers can also be at risk of something like this, particularly in a state that is stand your ground, particularly in a state where people want to not have the ability to even have to go through training to have firearms, you are going to see more things like this happen. So get rid of that entirely, and then also toughen up some of the gun laws. But that's a conversation for another day. But see, but but to the point, at the end of the day. No knock warrants are dangerous for all parties involved. Even with Breonna Taylor's family, you know, the neighbor, there were bullets that went through, and that was the only charge that was particularly, you know, uh, brought up in the beginning. But even the neighbors were in danger. So when are they really going to get to a point when they realize that if our evidence is solid, we shouldn't have to go through this process as well. Let's do everything by the book for the sake of everyone's safety. See, here, here's the thing that's crazy here, Julian. Um, uh, the prosecutors say that, uh, well... Uh, he, he purposely placed something back there that he knew that the cops were coming. Then they also claim, uh, and this is what they, they also, law enforcement claim traces of, first of all, in Texas you have the Castle Doctrine. Castle Doctrine doesn't apply if you're involved in legal activity. So <clears throat> law, law enforcement allegedly found traces of white powder on Guy's apartment floor in his car in the trash, but he was never charged with a drug crime. Okay. Now, he said, I had a neighbor who was attacked uh, by an intruder the previous week. Uh, prosecutors called several, uh, several witnesses. His defense didn't call any witnesses whatsoever. Uh, and again, convicted. Uh, but, but this right here goes to show you, if, if I'm on the other side, and again, I got an arm very much like Bre Breonna Taylor's boyfriend, you bust at the door, I'm going to protect me and my family uh, and what happened was they say he fired at four officers, uh, they uh, killing Dinwiddie, uh, and 40 rounds were fired at him. Hmm. 
40 rounds were fired at him. Okay, I'm just gonna let, let's just simmer that for a second. And while we simmer it, you said white powder was found in the trash. Was the trash in the bedroom and it was a baking, baking soda or something? I mean, come on now, white powder. They, the police have the ability to test the white powder. They did not say cocaine was found. They said white powder was found. White powder could be anything. So this, you know, again, this is just the repeated absurdity of the way that black people are treated in exercising our normal rights. And, you know, Roland, this stuff does trigger me. And it partially triggers me because I'm doing all this research on lynching and lynching culture. And this is just so awfully reminiscent of what has happened over and over again. I'm looking at a lynching now where a brother, it's literally almost the same thing happened. They bust in his house, he shot, he killed somebody, so they lynched him. Well, why they bust in his house? And they did not have a reason. They busted into his house because somebody said. And so they bust in, he was pre prepared to protect his family. We, you know, we are going back to Dred Scott. Black folks have no rights that whites are bound to respect. And th this brother has been dealt a terrible injustice to be basically incarcerated for nine years and then to be found guilty to a lesser charge. But since it's a life imprisonment, I hope it doesn't seem like he had good attorneys. So this is a this is a Ben Crump call, because it seems to me if if he says that the neighbors have been broken into, that would give him reason to be very um, concerned about somebody trying to bust down his house, down his door. Why weren't any of those neighbors called as witnesses? I mean, there are so many questions here, but the bottom line issue is that black people do not have rights in this country. We never did, and until we basically rise up, we probably never will. I mean, we have a little more than we had before, and we got had a president, got a vice president, but down there on the ground where the deacon was, was down, it didn't matter to him that there's a black vice president or president. He was a man who was being brutalized. And with this gentleman as well, you're looking at someone who sees, you know, who basically is living in a crime-ridden area, apparently. His neighbor was just busted into. Do, what right does he have? Does he have the right to protect himself? Or is he just supposed to lay there and get robbed, ripped off, brutalized, whatever? You don't know. So the, the no-knock warrant, I mean, oh, those things just need to be thrown away. If you have evidence, you can present your evidence. But to come in with no, no warning, no nothing, what are you expecting at 5.45 a.m. anyway? The, the police have gone, excuse me, they've gone wild. You know, they've gone wild, but we pay their salaries and we've respected it. We've accepted it. We act like we think it's okay. I know we don't think it's okay, but too many of us do. I can already hear the people talking about, well, was he, was he dealing drugs? Don't matter. You bust into the man's house. He defended himself. That's the end of it. Yeah, and the white powder um, comment to me sounds like a CYA uh, comment, which is cover your ASS by the police. Because like Dr. Malvo said, either it was cocaine or it was not. Um, they know that this was a botched raid. And, you know, these no-knock warrants um, by design are just a completely terrible idea because a lot of them happen um, that they schedule them in the middle of the night to catch people off guard. Well, when you catch people off guard, especially coming out of sleep, you're just going to get reactions from people. People are not going to be thinking clearly. So it increases the chance that whoever you're doing this no-knock warrant on is going to respond likely with firepower or likely with something very violent because you're waking them up out of their sleep. So at the end of the day, you know, I'll take it a step further than what Dr. Malvo said. Black people do not have the right to self-defense in this country. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times we hear things about the castle doctrine. We hear things about um, stand your ground and all that sounds good and common sense. And I'll just real quick tell you what those are and for anybody who doesn't know. But basically, these are laws across the country that say if somebody comes into your home, um, you can you can do whatever it takes to defend yourself as long as they are, you know, um, entering into your house, obviously not invited, basically trespassing. Um, you have the right to defend yourself. And that can include, you know, um, killing someone to protect yourself. But and so that sounds good to a lot of folks. But what th you don't know is when you add into that calculation, if you are black, what happens when you try to say that you are doing self-defense, just standing your ground or exercising the castle's doctrine is that it usually does not work out for people who are black. 
For people who look like myself and everybody else on this panel, the statistics are that white people are 20 times more likely to be able to use stand your ground or the castle defense, those laws, um, than black people. So that means black people are 20 times less likely to be able to use that in, in a defense in court successfully. So, you, so basically what that means is, even though these laws are on the books, you as a black person are not really going to be successful at using this when you get to court. And most likely you will just be found um, guilty of murder. And that is what has happened with this man. I honestly don't even know that he would have had that much more success had it not been officers that he shot. Because again, statistics don't lie. And in this country, self-defense is really something that has worked. It works really well for white folks. Um, but is not working well for black folks on paper. And so all of this is rolled into the gun conversation. When we talk about people having the right to protect and defend themselves and their families, there needs to be a serious conversation about equity in gun laws and equity in the self-defense conversation. Because right now, black folks in this country have essentially no right when it really boils down to it.